Here's the question that is often unanswered in people's minds. Can your mobile carrier track you and watch what you do? In most of my videos on mobile phones, I'm talking about the surveillance done by big tech, primarily Apple and Google, and I explain how extreme that surveillance is. But what about the mobile carrier? After all, you have your phone and internet service through the mobile carrier. You have their SIM card. They've got to know everything, right? After all, they know who you are and where you live. Well, this is not a video that's meant to bring any kind of fear. What I want to do is to bring clarity to the threats posed by different parties that have visibility of our data. And the mobile carrier definitely has some insight into what you do. However, as you will find out, it is actually nowhere near what big tech can control. And the other good news is I can show you how you can minimize what the carrier sees even more. As always, these topics are complex because of the technologies involved, but it shouldn't be too difficult to understand. Stay right there to learn about what carriers can see. The mobile carrier is a different animal when it comes to mobile phones. They're actually tied to a lot of regulations that require tracking and wiretapping and location tracking. Because of these laws, particularly in the United States, you need to understand what the phone can do to spy on you. And you will also need to understand what these laws are because it will make clear what you can expect the carrier to be able to do. The first law that is of interest, and many of you already understand intuitively, is that unlike with big tech, mobile carriers are required to apply KYC laws, know your customer. This means that a carrier has to collect your ID, your name, address, your credit information, and so on. The amount of KYC needed depends on whether the plan is prepaid or a standard subscription. Less KYC is required for prepaid because you have a temporary account. But this is what bothers most people concerned with privacy. And I get asked questions like, how can you get a mobile service without having to identify yourself? Well, for short-term use, this is possible. However, for long-term subscriptions, you are clearly known to the carrier and there's no escaping that. It's been like this even with landline phones. The phone number is heavily tied to our identity. Now, the next law to understand is the Kalia law in the United States. There may be similar laws in other countries and the capability likely exists globally because the equipment is standardized. The Kalia law is the Communications Assistance for Law Enforcement Act. This law requires that the carrier provide a way to wiretap any phone number in the public switched telephone network or PSTN. In reality, there are no wires involved in wiretapping. Law enforcement can simply use software that lets them link to the carrier via the internet and they can listen in to any conversation on the phone network at any time. The other piece that relates to this is texting or SMS. You can expect that all texting is recorded and stored. In the USA, phone records of who talks to whom and who texts who and the content of the text messages are sent to various government databases like the DCS net database of the FBI, for example. The next law of interest is the 911 or emergency feature of phones, which is tied to the AGPS or assisted GPS feature of the phone. When you dial 911, the phone will tower triangulate you and then that information will be sent to the emergency responding agency. So these are the three laws that have a direct impact on what the carrier can track. Just to frame the discussion a little better, Let's understand the pieces of your phone service. Think of the phone as having four separate functions. Number one, the phone service through the PSDN. Number two, SMS or texting. Number three, 911 emergency service. Number four, data plan or internet connectivity. If any of you doubt this, your carrier records your activities on the phone or SMS or your data plan, including timestamps and who you're communicating with. This should be obvious if you look at your bill detail. There you're able to discern all this. 
I've explained how the phone service, SMS, and 911 emergency services are tied to laws which define the architecture of how these services are used. But now let's look at the data side or the internet side. In reality, on Volte voice over LTE phones, which are required now by all carriers in the United States, all phone data, including phone calls and texts, go through the data part of the phone. There is no longer a separate transmission for voice. The way this actually works now is that all data is sent digitally from your phone. All the traffic is sent to the carrier via the cell baseband modem on your phone. Then at the carrier end, the carrier can split the signal for the PSDN network and SMS into a channel called SS7. The rest of the traffic is routed directly to the internet. So that we are completely clear here, the surveillance infrastructure tied to the government is focused on the SS7 side of things. This is where all the wiretapping and all that occur. The rest of the data channel is just standard internet. All of this will make a lot of sense later when we talk about how to mitigate the surveillance on our phone. So bear with me. Now in recent times, big tech has made multiple attempts to hoard the data the phone sends over the internet. While the SS7 traffic is controlled closely by the cell baseband modem on your phone, the data traffic is mostly controlled by the phone OS, which is Android or iOS. Just a sample of traffic on the internet side of things. Your phone needs to send DNS requests. Email is sent and received. If your phone is a normie phone, your phone constantly connects to Google or Apple with continuous telemetry of location and app usage. To corral the DNS data, big tech has changed how they send the data. Google by default sets the DNS part of your phone to be private, meaning the DNS requests no longer go to your carrier servers. Now they are routed to Google. So Google knows every website you visit instead of the carrier. Apple created the iCloud private relay now, so now the DNS traffic also goes to Apple instead of the carrier's DNS servers. DNS information or the resolution of internet names into internet IP addresses used to be a big source of data to the carriers. They can no longer see much of these from the phones. And this was a direct attack of big tech over the capability of the carriers. They did this because they can. Now, I'm not a supporter of big tech hoarding DNS like this, by the way, because they can aggregate the world data. But this topic is not about big tech, so I'll set that aside for some later discussion. Next issue on the internet data. The carrier still sees who you are sending traffic to and the identity of your specific device. They know your specific device because your subscriber identity is the IMZ. IMSI and is part of the traffic of the baseband modem with the tower. The IMZ is the authenticating identifier. Everything is checked to make sure your subscription is active. Your carrier assigns you an IPv6 address, which is an IP address that is specific to your phone. This is likely a stable identifier. You can check your assigned IPv6 address in the settings area of your phone. Now, this IPv6 address is not visible to the recipient of your data. So if you're going to some website, the website cannot know your IPv6 address. The reason for that is that the mobile carrier routes all phone traffic inside the carrier local network using IPv6. But when it leaves the carrier, it is funneled to a router and all the traffic then takes the IP address of the router which is in the old IPv4 format. So in the case of an outside party trying to get a fixed IP address on you, this is not possible using mobile data. The IP addresses they see are shared and it is IPv4. Only the carrier can see the translation of the IPv6 address to the IPv4 address, which of course they can do. So you may think then that the carrier has deeper insight into what you do over the internet since they can look at specific phones and see what websites you visit and watch your traffic. But the reality is that for many years now, the majority of traffic 
likely 99% is encrypted. Big Tech has incorporated the requirement for encryption using TLS in practically every step, at least in the communications between the phone and the Big Tech platform. This means that the carrier does not see much. Yes, they can track your IPv6 traffic to the IPv4 website, but they don't see what you're actually doing. Yes, they can figure out what the IPv4 website is. Using a technique called reverse DNS lookup, they should be able to tell that you're communicating with Instagram or Facebook, for example. When you use email, most email now is TLS encrypted as well up to the host. Yes, the carrier can tell that you're communicating with Gmail, but they cannot read the email at that stage. Now, Big Tech can read it though on the back end and the internet trunk providers like AT&T and Verizon and so on can read the email traffic going through all the internet trunks between mail servers. But this is not related to the traffic on the phone and I'm skipping that because it's not about the mobile carrier. So the reality is that the data known by the carrier about your internet actions has become severely limited. And they didn't like this because they lost a big source of income. They can no longer sell your internet data. However, their prosperity is tied to Apple and Google with the phones. So the carriers make that money back by forcing you to get a new fancy iPhone 14 Pro and Google Pixel 6a this year. Now let's see what you have learned here to truly limit what the carriers can see about you. From the data side, it should be clear that they see IP addresses of traffic bidirectionally, but none of the traffic can be read directly because of TLS encryption. But think of this element. If you use a VPN, then they will see a single IP address bidirectionally, and this IP address will be static. Again, let's be clear here. We're talking about internet traffic using the carrier data rather than Wi-Fi, which does not go to the carrier. If the VPN is on, the carrier may be able to tell you're in a VPN, or they can guess that. But other than that info, they see nothing. They have traffic timestamps. Other than that, they are completely blind. So if this is important to you, understand that using a VPN limits the visibility of the carrier into your traffic. Now let me expand this into a better tip. Let's say you're using an encrypted messaging app like Signal and you are using a VPN, then this is even better. Now the carrier doesn't know you're on signal. It doesn't know you're transmitting to signal. And if your phone is doing multiple things at once, it can't even discern anything by timestamp too well because all traffic is aggregated to the VPN. Is it really essential that the carrier not know what you're doing on the internet even by IP address? Frankly, this is a risk factor only if you're a government target or some government target, like whistleblowers, journalists, politicians, etc. Otherwise, for a normal law-abiding citizen, this kind of surveillance is probably too minimal. A third party couldn't acquire this information without some warrant or access to the data using the prison program of the NSA. But it is good to know that using a VPN gives you 100% carrier blackout. You get to use their network and they don't get to see anything. I know many of you will feel good about this. Now just a little interruption first to help support this channel. My company provides services that help you maintain your privacy. We have a VPN service, Bytes VPN, which will of course hide your activities from the carrier. We have an email product, Braxmail, that completely eliminates the dangerous metadata in email. And our latest product is the new Brax2 privacy phone. These products are on my app, Braxme. The link is in the description. Now let's continue. What about the phone side with the public switch telephone network and SMS? Obviously, that's a big area of threat. But here's the thing, folks. Most of us no longer use the phone that much for voice. I would say the majority of traffic is now SMS or using some other app for communications. This is why the carriers are able to implement 
VOLT or voice over LTE without much issue because voice is no longer such a heavy load on their network, even when it is digital. This is where I introduce you to another method of using your cell phone. I've talked about this in other videos. Instead of using your phone's voice dialer, you can use some voice over IP app, VOIP. Examples of this that are common are Skype and Viber, for example. I think Skype is tied into the Kalia law, so this is subject to wiretapping too. So I don't recommend this, though it shields you from the carrier. However, most of the surveillance on a phone network is at the behest of the government, so transferring the surveillance from the carrier to Skype accomplishes nothing. Other voice over IP providers, though, like Viber, are not USA based, so they can likely provide more isolation. Note, though, that if you are talking to someone in the USA, then of course the government can listen in to who you're calling. Clearly, anything that goes over the PSDN can be listened to. But here's an interesting detail. Talking to someone using an app like Signal, which supports voice and video, is completely invisible to the government or the carrier. Even using an app like Viber, where both parties are talking on Viber, eliminates the visibility from outside eyes. The government would have made some special deal with Viber to listen in, and this is not likely to be a mass surveillance thing. Let me summarize this part. The less you use the voice side of your phone or use alternative apps, then the carrier sees less and the government sees less as well. I like this part because of my disgust with mass surveillance of the population. The next piece is the SMS side. Well, this is simple. Don't use SMS. Use some other app to communicate. Now, unfortunately, many of you just transfer the surveillance from the carrier to Facebook or some other big tech evil. So use common sense. Get your families to communicate on a secure messaging platform. I was surprised that I convinced my entire family and relatives to talk only on Signal. Though I have misgivings about Signal for general communication use, I think it is excellent for youth with family communications and it is very easy for your family to acclimate themselves to it. So if you use Signal for communications of voice and text, you basically make your family communications disappear from all prying eyes. That is certainly a beginning and a very positive thing. The final threat that I have not addressed is the AGPS or Location Tower Triangulation. Now, I discussed this in another video since Google is tied to this, but I will only discuss this as it pertains to the carrier. As far as I know, this triangulation only occurs when you dial 911, so I don't believe this is a general threat where a carrier can follow you around precisely. A carrier, however, can see your tower location so they can pinpoint you roughly with 4G to around 3 quarter mile or 1.5 kilometers. Now, this is the bad part. If you use 5G and this is the true 5G and not the current fake 5G that is in common use, the antennas on the tower will be able to actually point to your exact location using a feature called beamforming. This is one of the reasons I hate 5G. But 5G is not quite here yet. But it's getting there. Maybe two to three years. And we will be truly zucked. If you listen to what I'm saying carefully, you might find that some of you can function with a mobile that has data only. No phone calling or texting. You can find unlimited data only plans from all the major carriers. These are subscriptions intended for tablets like iPads that don't have a cell phone side. This is actually a much safer option on the phone. This means you only use a voice over IP provider for all phone services. Your phone dialer will not work. All messaging goes through some app. By eliminating the public switch telephone network or PSDN from your device, then a bunch of tracking is eliminated and you can't make a mistake because you have no access to the phone side. But again, this is not foolproof. If you're using voice over IP to access the PSDN, then you will be tracked based on who you call. 
though not necessarily your current device. So the safest option is not to use the PSDN at all, and today that's possible by sp sticking to secure apps like XMPP, Signal, and so on. If you understand all this, you can implement your own level of privacy from the carrier depending on what inconvenience you're willing to tolerate. I'm on other platforms. I'm on rumble.com and odyssey.com. I also have my own platform, Braxme, and that's where my store is. In case I get the platform, please follow me on these other platforms. The links are in the description. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.